Hey guys, Mr. B here with another demonstration, another uh, real life example of science in action. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about water, again, and the different states of matter. So let's uh, imagine that you are making some spaghetti. You're making some spaghetti and you're boiling the water. Uh, let's say that uh, you put your hand over the pot of water. Tell me, which would be worse? Would it be worse to keep your hand over the pot of water? Or would it be worse to submerge your hand in the actual water itself? Neither of those options are obviously very good, uh, but if you had to pick, which one would be worse? In other words, which one is going to be hotter? Which one is going to transfer more heat to your hand whenever you are above in the steam or when you are submerged in the boiling water? So I've got a little demonstration that I'm going to show you to uh, answer that question. And no, I am not going to be sticking my hand in any hot water. I will be showing you uh, the chemistry. All right, here's my setup. You'll notice I have my hot plate. My hot plate has an Erlenmeyer flask on it. That Erlenmeyer flask has some good old water. Now to capture this water vapor that we're going to get uh, coming off of it, I have this little copper tube. And you'll notice that over here the copper tube has actually changed color. I'll explain that later on. But this is going to capture that uh, gas and we're going to see something come out the end here. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up. I'm going to boil it and then we'll see what happens. I've got my thermometer. Let's take a look and see what temperature is. Alright, so it looks like it slowed down around 70-ish degrees. Now, you may say to yourself, wait a minute, I thought water boiled at 100 degrees Celsius. That is the case, but what happens is whenever it mixes with the air outside, it actually starts to cool down right away. So what we want to do is we want to try and figure out a way that we can actually heat this up even more. In answer to our first question though, which would be hotter, which would be worse, sticking your hand in the water versus above the water, that sort of answers our question. It probably would be better to keep it above just because it does mix with the air around it uh, and the water would be all at 100 degrees Celsius. But we'll see that steam can actually be much more dangerous than uh, boiling water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this heat up a little bit more, but I'm going to add even more heat, and this you'll see is the reason for the copper pipe, because here I've got my Merker burner, and I'm going to give that a go, okay, and this one gets real hot, and I'm just going to put that right underneath my copper pipe there, and you'll notice what's happening to the steam, so let's let this go for a minute, and let's take a look what happens to the steam. You will notice there's quite some pretty colors around the copper pipe as this happens. Copper has a tendency to burn green. Okay, so where did the steam go? Is it still there? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's disappeared. But if I take a beaker here, just an empty beaker, glass beaker, and if I put that right in front, notice what happens. Okay, it gets all foggy. Notice all that condensation, so there's definitely some stuff coming out of there. But now it is so hot that all of the water has turned to gas. Before, when it was uh, sort of cloudy, that was because there was little tiny droplets of water, uh, liquid water. Now we've reached a point where it is all water vapor. So really, steam is actually clear. It's colorless. You can't see it. So whenever you're seeing above a pot of boiling water, that steam has a little bit of water vapor in it. Now what's extra cool about this steam is that it is well over 100 degrees Celsius by now. In fact, just to test it, I've got here a little match. Let's see what happens when I put this match in front of my copper pipe. Ah, I didn't time it right. Let's try it again. But you can see the match. can actually be ignited. So let's just think about that. I just started fire using water. 
Isn't that pretty neat? Now there's one other thing that's pretty neat about this, and that is, just like it can burn a match, it can actually, let's take a look here, it can actually burn through paper. So whenever you have really, really intense pipes, you know, that, that have really high pressures and really high temperatures and you bust a leak, you gotta be very careful because that can actually do quite a bit of damage. Okay, and that was two, two layers of paper. So this goes really crazy. So I thought you might be interested in seeing that in the power that water actually has. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. As this is cooling down, you can take a look and see that the copper pipe itself actually reacted, right? There was a uh, cha change in color. That was one of the signs of our chemical reaction. So in this case, the copper, which starts out as this nice, you know, orangey copper color, actually reacted with the oxygen in the air and created copper oxide. So once this cools, it'll start to flake off. So this, uh, this copper pipe will actually only last so long because eventually the copper itself gets worn down and there will be holes in it and then that won't be so good. Just to show you how hot this coil actually gets, it actually uh, did quite a number on my uh, clamp here. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize the first time I was trying this demonstration how hot it was getting and the clamp itself just started to melt.